Hello, I'm Quentin and I just wanted to share with you a few tips about saving space when you're building Docker containers or Docker images on which you're going to make containers. Um, let's have a look at a very simple Docker file here. Uh, in this case I'm starting with Alpine Linux, um, which is nice and small and gives me most of the facilities I want, but almost everything I say here would apply in just the same way if you were using Ubuntu or Debian or some sort of Red Hat based system. Uh, the package manager I'm using here is APK, but it would also apply to um, something like uh, yum or, or apt-get. So what I'm doing here is, in preparation for my, in this case, Python-based app, I'm installing various standard packages that I like here, including Python and pip, and some things like vim and htop, which I like to be able to use. Now here's a very simple Docker file. Let's build a Docker container from this. So uh, I'll just get into the right directory and do docker, docker build. I'll give it a tag demo1 and I'm just going to build here and since I've done this before it's all in the cache and it's all very fast. Okay. Let's have a look at docker images. Whoa, I've got lots of them. Okay, let's look at the first few docker images. There. And what we can see is demo1, which I actually built a little while ago, there is 77 megabytes. Okay, now that's actually a remarkably good size, and that's because it's um, Alpine Linux. It would be a couple of hundred, I think, if I were using uh, using Ubuntu or something. Um, however, suppose I want to see if I can make that a bit smaller in any way. One of the things you get with most package managers is a local cache of the downloaded packages, and you can save space on your disk by deleting that cache after you're done. Uh, so in the... Uh, case of apk, it's var cache apk star. You can remove those um, if you're not doing any more apk uh, operations or you're not worried about the speed of any more apk operations afterwards and that saves space on your disk. So if I do this um, I should end up with a smaller docker file. Let's uh, build this again. Uh, docker build in this location. There you go, we can now see that that uh, apk file is there. And let's do my Docker images head again. And we now have demo one and oh, it's exactly the same size. It hasn't changed at all. Um, now, I wouldn't expect the change to be large in this case, but it's interesting. Why does it not change? Well, the reason for that is that when you're building a, an image uh, for a container like this, what you're actually doing is creating several layers. You probably know this, but um, the file system that uh, that's used behind Docker images is layered. So what actually happens when you're constructing it from a Docker file is it runs this command, it does a kind of snapshot, uh, and that's the... Um, uh, that's the first layer of the file system. It then runs the next command, which is this one in this case, does another, does another snapshot, that's the next layer of the file system, and so on. And that makes it nice and fast because it means if you just add one line down here, uh, maybe I want to actually to copy my requirements.txt um, into uh, slash term slash requirements.txt on the um, in the container, that's something I'm going to want to do. Let's run this again. And you'll see that basically this uses the cache for this, this instruction, it uses the cache for this instruction. It's basically the, um, the, the container images that we built before and the only thing that changes and actually requires us to do anything is that little copy. And so we now have a new um, uh, our, our new final container is, is that. So each of these instructions essentially it, uh, if they don't change, then um, in the Docker file, then you don't. It, it, it can use a cached image of them. So that's handy. Uh, let's just check for future references. Let's just check. So yes, 77.04 is still the size of our demo one. Now, the problem is that each of these lines then adds things to the previous image, and even though the underlying disk space um, required may go down because there's no way to kind of remove stuff from the image the, from the the previous layer of file system that was generated here um, actually removing stuff doesn't make things any smaller and so um, this you know 
may end up with a, a tidier image when you actually log into it or when you're using it um, uh, as in the final container, but it doesn't change the size of your container file on disk and it doesn't save you time if, say, you're uploading this container to a, um, a Docker repository. So the way to deal with this is to make sure that the thing that does the tidying up is part of the, ins the, the single instruction that uses up the space in the first place. And so you may already have seen things like uh, this, where you take that and we run this command and then we run this command and we do it as all as part of that one command line, that one, that one run command. It's a single command from the Docker files point of view. And what that means is it's not until after this tidying up has happened that um, the, the, the thing gets snapshotted to disk. And so we should get a slightly reduced size now if I run this. There you go. And you can see that whole command has changed, so it's going back and installing, installing everything. But now it does the tidying up, and then it does the snapshotting to disk. And so if we now do docker images minus head, you can see it's gone down from 77.04, which was our previous one, to 76. Not a big change in this case. Okay, but we have saved saved uh, space on disk and and time in uploads and so on, uh, simply by moving this moving the tidying up command onto the same line as the uh, as the command which used up the space in the first place. Okay. Now, that was a very slight improvement, but sometimes it can be more dramatic. So let me show you my requirements.txt here. So this is a whole load of uh, Python modules that I want to include for my final app. And when I include those, um, the pip command actually needs to build some of those with the compiler. And, and so if you just try running uh, pip install minus r requirements.txt, you find that you can't unless you've actually got um, a whole load of uh, GCC and other related utilities installed in the container. So what I ended up doing was um, adding in all of those things. So let me put this in here. And uh, let's be good and do the same thing here. Tidy them up afterwards. And then I can do my pip install command, which I'm actually not going to bother with for the moment. Uh, you'll just have to take it from me that it works. Okay, so here are a whole load of extra things I need, like build base, which includes all sorts of utilities uh, and various headers and other development libraries and so on, so that I can compile the stuff I need um, when I come to do the install. Right, let's build that. Um, Okay, and now if I look at my images, we see, whoa, my demo one has gone up to 484 megabytes. Now I'm lucky, I have a fast internet connection, but if I were to upload that too often to my uh, registry, um, it would uh, start to take rather a long time. Uh, and we're not done yet, because of course the thing I want to do next is um, run pip install minus r slash dump slash requirements dot text. So that says all of the Python packages in requirements.txt I also want to install in here, and I think that may make it even bigger. Okay, the first bit's nice and fast because we've got all these, so here we go, a little bit more. But at least I can now, and some of this may take a while, I can now actually run this um, because I have all of the... Um, all of the compilation tools needed. There you go. And now we'll find that my Docker image has gone now over half a gigabyte. And I'd really like to get that down. Now the important thing to note here is that after I've done this pip install, I don't actually need all of these, uh, I don't need a compiler on this uh, on this container, I don't need a lot of these headers, I just need to be able to um, create uh, the Python packages in the first place, and then in fact, all of this can go away. And again, here the important thing is that, uh, so, we, so we could 
do an APK delete all of these, certainly the big ones. Put this in here. So if I get rid of, of those two, for example, that saves a great deal of space. But we have the same issue as we had before that this reduces the, the amount of space actually required on, uh, on disk, but not the amount of space required um, for the container. And so once again, the way to do this is to extend this so this is a single line in the Docker file. So we install all the things we need, we tidy up the cache, we do a pip install of the Python packages, and then we delete the packages we no longer need having successfully installed our Python packages. And if we run that now, and when we've finally completed, we should now find that our image has gone from over half a gigabyte back down to 175 megabytes. So we've got everything we need to run our thing, including some specially compiled packages, and we're still noticeably less than a basic installation of, say, Ubuntu. One last tip I will give you, because this struck, uh, struck me recently, is what you often have in your um, Docker file is something like, you know, copy the whole of this directory uh, into where my app's going to live in the container, something like that. This is a fairly standard thing to do. And one thing to note is that if, like me, you use Git a lot, you may have a substantial Git repository behind the scenes, uh, especially if it's an app that's been around for some time, and this copy will copy hidden dot directories like dot git um, as part of the copy command. So there's a useful file called docker ignore um, into which you may want to put things like dot git and that can also sometimes uh, make a substantial difference. Similarly anything really in this in this uh, demo directory that you don't want to include uh, in the docker container and those things will then be ignored by commands like copy, and uh, it's very similar to a .gitignore file if you're familiar with those. So I hope some of you find that useful.